Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today I am covering something different. We are going to be talking about my new favorite show I found on Netflix, Emily in Paris. I am one episode in and I am so completely hooked. This is such a good show. It's by Darren Starr who did Sex in the City and it's got that potential. It's, um... I just can't even explain it. It's beautiful. It's beautifully shot. They did a fantastic job. I I just love it, and I'm so excited to talk about it and watch along with you guys. So let's get into it. Hey, guys, I just want to take a second and say if you're enjoying this show, please check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Real Housewives Recaps, or check the comments below, and I'll put a link. And for... A dollar a week, you can support my show and get four bonus episodes per month. I'm covering Scary Island, like the greatest season of Real Housewives in New York. So check it out. Thanks so much. So it starts off in Chicago. And can I just tell you, like, you know how in Sex and the City, they always say the city is the fifth cast member? That's kind of what's happening here. They do these gorgeous shots of Chicago initially. But then ultimately Paris, the just, they captivate me as much as the show itself does. So immediately we're introduced to Emily, and Emily is cute and young and played by Lily Collins, who I just enjoy watching her. And we get to see a little bit of her personality right off the bat. She's running, she's timing herself against the day before, she's excited because she beat her yesterday time by 15 seconds. So Emily works for Madeline, who is played by the Grey's Anatomy, Kate Walsh. I loved her on Grey's Anatomy. I love the name Addison. I thought she was great. So Madeline is just so excited to move to Paris. She has a master's in French. Uh, Emily does social marketing, and she has this idea. She's emailed it to Madeline to pitch at her meeting later. And Madeline's like, no, no, I'm going. You need to you know, become closer with the client. They need to get used to you since you'll be in charge. So all is right in the world as it usually is in these shows. And they're talking about these clients. They have to pitch for this perfume company. And so they're smelling the perfume and lo and behold, Madeline, it makes her sick. So you can imagine where we're going with this. Yeah, okay, bear with me. This part's a little predictable. She's barfing a trash can. It's kind of silly, but whatever gets us to Paris, I'm on board with. Meanwhile, we have another beautiful shot of Chicago. Look at this. So Emily meets her boyfriend at a sports bar, and I didn't even catch his name, but he's kind of a dud. I'm sure they're going to last a really long time, right? <laughs> no, not so much. So she tells him, uh, yeah, I have to go to Paris. She explains that the company still needs someone there, so they asked her to go. Uh, boyfriend's not happy about it. She's explaining the bonus that she gets, apartment all set up, made a spreadsheet of when he can come and when she can fly back, and he pretends to be supportive. You can imagine where this is going. And then it happens. She arrives in Paris. That face she's making, that's the same face I made in Paris. I love Paris. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. So she arrives at a rental and the agent meets her with a key to the flat. And of course, he's good looking. She's in apartment 501 and this is a big deal, which we'll find out later. But uh, in Paris... The ground floor is ground, and then it becomes one after that, even though for us it would be floor two. Yeah, you get the idea. So this agent is being, like, overly flirty and asking her for a drink, and she's like, no, no, I got a boyfriend. But I'm so, I'm just so distracted by this view. This view is incredible. Look at that. I live in a shoebox to have that view. That's amazing. So he's thinking her enthusiasm is an enthusiasm for him. She's like, no, no. F off. See you later. So since Emily's alone a lot, we see her doing this. I mean, she's a social media marketing manager. So she does a lot of social media stuff, but she makes these posts. And you can tell her mood based on the way she posts, kind of like Carrie used to write the column. Fashion is also a big part of this show. I want these shoes. <laughs> and we see her trying to make a good impression as she arrives at her office a day before she's supposed to. 
So they think she's this overachiever and she's just excited to be there. She's trying to explain in English what's happening. People are having trouble understanding her, so she's using this translating app and it's just not going well. So he goes to get her new boss and let's just say it, she's a bitch. She's a real big bitch. <laughs> so I have the feeling this is going to be a running theme. Again, I'm watching these as I record these, so I don't know what's going to happen, but the writing's kind of on the wall. So Emily's just trying so hard and overachieving, and the boss is just not overly impressed right off the bat with Emily. So we do get to find out what's happening. So Emily is there for a year, and or she thinks it's a year. So the something about the terms of her company was... She has to stay on. This French company will keep her on until she leaves. So you can imagine what's going to happen there. The boss is going to make it miserable for her until she leaves. So Emily tries to have a meeting and explain, you know, the company she works for and how she can try to help them. She's speaking in English and immediately the one she's supposed to be working with closely, the social media expert, gets up and leaves. I feel for Emily here. She's trying. She's trying so hard too hard and she's being optimistic and nobody's into it <laughs> and we'll you know i i look forward to you know cracking this more and finding out more of what's going on but it was an interesting way it's an interesting first day at work we'll leave it at that so this is where the meme boss and the head guy talk about it being a disaster and again that they have to keep her on until she leaves and that's where mean boss says with me as her boss let's see how long it lasts a cue sinister laugh there. <laughs> and then we have this shot of her in Paris. And it's incredible. She's FaceTiming her boyfriend. He's excited. He got a passport. She's saying, hurry, I miss you. Because she had such a rough day. and He can't really talk. So she's struggling a little bit. Emily comes home. And this is where that floor confusion pays off. Because she tries to get into her apartment. And what's the matter? It's not working. Oh my gosh, hot guy. <laughs> oh my God, he's so good looking. So meet Gabriel. He lives one floor directly above her, or below her. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be trouble and interesting. And her facial expression says it all. He's checking her out as she's leaving and can't wait to see what the heck happens there. So it's the next morning, and she's trying to get used to things. I love this outfit. I'm not even a yellow person, but I think she looks fantastic. I love the fashion already. Look at this bakery. I want to eat everything in this bakery. She's trying to decide what to eat and lands on a pan Oh, chocolat. I don't think I said that right, but you know what I'm talking about. And oh my god, her facial expression when she's eating that thing is so funny. Oh, I want to eat that so bad. But uh, her mind is blown by the butter, the flour, the chocolate. It's just it's just too much for her. So she goes on to the office. So she gets there at 8.30 and she cannot figure out how to get in. She's really having trouble. Two hours later, that front desk guy comes up. And yet yeah, they don't open until 10.30. So she's been stuck there. She gets in, gets settled, and Bitch Boss walks by. So that means Bitch Boss is coming in later. Meanwhile, the social media lady uh, that is scared to death of Emily, is they're trying to talk to each other, and again, she just runs away. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting to figure out. Poor Emily is just trying to make a friend. She asks everybody to lunch. Her boss says, no, I'll have a cigarette. <laughs> asks everybody else, and they all say, no. So she ends up going on her lunch break and she finds this beautiful park and it's just amazing. She's sitting there, she's got her baguette and her apple and it just looks incredible and she meets somebody. These kids knock the baguette out of her hand and who does she meet? Their nanny. So this is Mindy, the nanny from Shanghai who happened to go to college in Chicago. So they... They hit it off. Uh, Mindy's nice. She gives Emily her number and says, hey, text me sometime if you feel lonely. So that was sweet. At least she met somebody. So after her lunch break, she's walking back to the office. And what does she see? Everybody from her office enjoying lunch. And it's just a punch to the gut. She feels it. That bitch boss doesn't even try to hide what's happening. She's actually smirking because she got caught. She hears them calling her Le. Pluk, I think I'm pronouncing that right. 
She looks it up. Yeah, they're calling her the Hick. So she's just having a tough time. She goes for a walk afterwards. She stops at this cafe. She's trying to text her boyfriend that she misses him. He's like, we'll talk later. Then she runs into the crazy hair guy, uh, Luke, from her office. He rolls on up to her. He does apologize her to her for the little Luke thing. Says that they're afraid of her and her ideas. And she's like, why are they afraid of me? We feel we have to work harder to make more money. And then he, he explains that Americans live to work, but in Paris they work to live. So Luke is surprised when she says work makes her happy. So again, we see Emily's social media posts become her her feelings on things, her interior monologue. And so she finally admits that she's lonely. So we cut to her in the middle of the night, sound asleep, and... That's, it's 3 a.m. and that's when her boyfriend calls. And he wants to have cyber sex. Uh, so she's half awake, but I think she's so lonely. She's like, okay, whatever. So they kind of get into it a little bit. He does his part and then it freezes. So she can't even do her part. So she brought a friend with her to Paris. So <laughs> she goes to use the friend. And what happens? She blows the electricity in the entire old building. So it's hilarious. It's a funny, shocking way to end things. She's just laying in pitch black. What a great first full day in Paris. And that is it for the first episode. You guys, I am hooked. I'm obsessed. I love it. I love Emily. I love Paris. Can't wait to see what the heck happens. I'm just excited to get into this show. So I'll be recapping this along with everything else because I'm obsessed so I hope you get into it too so we can talk about it because I really want to know your thoughts so I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you found something fun and new to watch and I hope I can help entertain you so (laughs) thank you guys for everything I really appreciate it I love all of your comments leave me a comment down below I love reading those you can uh, support the show on patreon and you can Find me on Twitter at Real Recaps, and I hope you guys have the best week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.